There was one more thing that I did want to mention that we didn't, which I think is super important as we talked a lot about what to eat, but almost equally important is when we eat, right? Mm. And how much we eat. So I just want to touch on that a little bit here because you could be eating um, all the great things, but if uh, if you're not giving your digestive system time to rest, if you're not eating at the best hours for you, um, and you're maybe eating too much, then it's kind of, it doesn't necessarily even matter. Yeah. You know, uh, what we ate, how much we ate and when we ate, they're like the three things people are interested in. And I'd say I put what we ate at number one Mm -hmm. and that affects how much we ate. But then I think when we ate is also, you know, worthy of consideration, uh, particularly once we have the foundations of what we eat in play. I've interviewed um, Sachin Panda, a number of different sort of chrononutrition scientists. So these are scientists that are interested in circadian biology. So we have these circadian rhythms um, that are greatly affected by things like light exposure, um, but they're also affected by meal timing. And these circadian rhythms are kind of in, in a very simplified uh, way they prepare us for what we need to do. So you'll have certain hormonal changes in the morning that are preparing you for being awake and digestion. And then towards the end of the day, particularly if the lights are coming down, um, hopefully they are, you're getting changes in hormones that are preparing you for rest and sleep and rejuvenation, not so much for digestion. So the hypothesis you know, was that perhaps if you align your meals with the circadian rhythms, we'll see better health outcomes and better and you know improved blood glucose control, for example. And there is some signal there. If I was to simplify it, the the evidence that sort of suggests that eating within a 10 or 12 hour eating window is going to be better than eating in a 15 to 16 hour eating window, which is what the average American eats over 15 hours, which is kind of like rolling out of bed, having a bite of a donut and then <laughs> you know, finishing that donut right when you're about to go to bed. <laughs> it's crazy. Don't recommend that. Yeah. Uh, so 10 to 12 hours, which is very achievable from a social point of view. When you start to restrict down further, and some people certainly um, can do that and they manage it fine, but it, it tends to get in the way of having three meals a day, which for families when they're, you know, parents are, if they want to enjoy breakfast with their kids or dinner with their, their family, the 10 or 12 hour window makes it achievable. Um, and then in terms of calorie distribution, it seems that there is some benefit and depends on your metabolic health. So the, the less metabolically healthy you are, the more this matters. Mm -hmm. The more metabolically healthy you are, the more you can get away with. Mm -hmm. So there is some signal to suggest that having more calories sort of earlier in the day, not as soon as you wake up, allowing 90 minutes or so before you're eating is seems to be optimal. But more of your calories towards that first and second meal of the day when you're most active seems to be superior to the opposite, which would be having more of your calories sort of closer to bedtime. Yeah. Um, so I think 10 or 12 hour uh, eating window, you know, waking up and not eating for at least an hour, hour and a half or so, that sort of starts your, your eating window, have more calories earlier in the day. And hopefully when you sort of calculate that and look at your bedtime, you haven't eaten for, again, 90 minutes before you've gone to bed at least, something mm. like that. Within my own experience, I'm curious to see what you do as well, just because I exp- was experimenting with like, you know, intermittent fasting probably seven years ago. And I, what I found, what I feel best doing is actually having one meal a day. And like just around, I usually never eat before podcasts. So if I'm filming, then it's maybe like a, mm. a 2 p.m. kind of bigger meal, um, or maybe I'll separate it and do like a, like a four hour eating window. But certainly finishing uh, like five to six plus hours before I go to bed. Mm. I feel like optimizing for that deep sleep is like super important for the cascade that it has in the rest of your health. I'm curious, what do you feel like has been? Yeah. I struggle to get enough calories in mm. if I do it in one meal. Yeah. And I've tried I've tried some of that before. I agree with you. I like don't eat food if I'm doing something in the morning like this. I just feel sharper yeah. if I'm fasted through that. Um, but I tend, I do like to eat something particularly after uh, I've trained. 
Um, and if I'm if I'm just doing one meal a day, I'd get nowhere near enough calories and I lose weight, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which is not my goal. Yeah. It might be someone's goal and that's right. that's great. Um, and certainly I don't like eating close to bed. However, if if I allowed four or five hours, I'm starving. I wake mm-hmm. up starving. Uh, so I've kind of played around with that. I think, you know, find find what leaves you feeling best, sharpest mentally, gives you the best sleep. Yeah. Right. Those are things that are, are going to be important there. 